From 1961 until his retirement after North's 1975 Premiership triumph, Doug Wade set new records and standards in goal-kicking excellence. On the eve of the 1974 finals, he became the second man to reach 1,000 goals and a month later became the first North Melbourne player to kick a century of goals in a season. He headed the VFL goal-kicking chart four times, holds the club records for a season with Geelong and North, was the leading club goal-kicker with Geelong 11 times and North three times, and played 267 games. He was football's mop-top at a time when four gentlemen from Liverpool were kings of the pop world. No man created such a cult following in football as Collingwood star full-forward Peter McKenna. He too created his own hits. Hundreds of them, in fact, over a decade with the Magpies. In 1970, he became the first Collingwood player to reach 100 goals for 31 years. And he repeated the feat in 71 and again in 1972. McKenna had the knack of scoring bags of goals. In fact, he scored 10 or more in a match on 13 occasions, heading Coleman and Hudson. By all rights, Peter Hudson's football career should have ended when he seriously injured his knee in the opening round of 1972. The game's most celebrated forward had kicked 100 goals in each of the four previous years and had equaled Bob Pratt's record of 150 goals in 1971. Yet, after a 23-month layoff, Hudson landed in a helicopter at VFL Park, kicked eight goals against Collingwood and then flew home to Tasmania. Ron Casey, who's our full forward of that trio? Well, after the tally of points have been counted, the selection for full forward in our Television Hall of Fame team, Peter Hudson. Some shouting for free drinks down there in uh, Tasmania. Peter, do you ever have nightmares about running into that goal at 150 and not getting it? Yes, I, I must admit, Sandy, I do think about it a lot. Uh, but then again, as I've said many, many times, it, it's great to be bracketed with such a great footballer as Bob Pratt. Right. Looking back at your career, why did you give away the game at a relatively early age? Well, when I hurt my knee. I had the opportunity to go into a hotel in Tasmania and I was very doubtful about my knee ever being any good again and the hotel was a certainty and I thought, well, here goes. Talking about coaching now, particularly at Hawthorne, what influence did John Kennedy have on your game? Oh, a lot of influence on my game. I think every other player that played at Hawthorne, he was a great person and uh, uh, if everybody could model their lives on a person like John Kennedy, they'd be the better for it. Peter, I know you're well tied up down there in Tasmania, but have you still any desires or ambitions to come back to VFL and possibly coach? Well, I, I, I'd say yes, and I'd say that pretty well every player that's ever played VFL would like to coach VFL. So we can possibly look forward to seeing you back here? <laughs> oh, I don't know, I've been through that once already. <laughs> but, well. Uh, uh, you know, if the opportunity was there and the timing was right, I'd say there'd be a very good chance. Peter, this was a very tight position to pick tonight. Congratulations. Peter Hudson, mm -hmm. full forward on Sevens Hall of Fame. Well done, Peter.